let's take a look at the baggage door, which is located on the left um, hand side, just uh, just behind the wing area. Um, it uh, opens inwards and upwards on two sets of tracks and is uh, supported opening by some balance springs, which kind of counterbalance it. It can be open from the inside as well, uh, but it's not an official emergency exit. There's a retention clip which holds it when it's in the fully open position. And when it's closed and locked, two plungers or chute bolts uh, pop into fittings located on the door frame. There are two proc switches which give an indication that it's uh, closed and secure uh, from on the flight deck. Uh, the outer handle, there's also a key lock in there for security. The aft equipment bay hatch opens down and swings forward uh, to give you access to the aft equipment bay and up inside that bay yeah, is where you'll find the air conditioning packs, APU compartment and so on. Um, you'll notice on there it says no step, which is kind of ironic because actually they are in fact steps and you use those to step up into the aft equipment bay. The reason it says no step is that you shouldn't step on it if you happen to be inside the aft equipment bay with the door uh, closed. It wouldn't support your weight if you stood on it inside with the door closed. Not that you would ever go in there and then shut the door. Uh, you can't shut it from the inside anyway. But basically there's a locking handle on the outside that you turn 90 degrees and there are two plungers that, uh, um, or shoot bolts that go into fittings on the door frame. There's also a ventilation grill on there because um, this aft equipment bay is in the non-pressurized area, but um, the outflow valves outflow all the cabin air into this aft, aft equipment bay. There is one emergency overwing exit on the right hand side of the aeroplane. This is a plug type hatch that hinges uh, at the bottom, although the, when you open the um, hatch, the hinge fitting kind of detaches and you can throw the door out. It's operated by internally or externally. You either pull the handle on the inside or push the plate on the outside. And when you do that, two shoot bolts retract from the door fittings or the door frame fittings and the door rotates in towards you. Once you've rotated it far enough to clear the structure, you can then lift it out, up from the hinge fitting and um, remove it. So we have a door indication system um, for obviously the main passenger door, which we'll talk about later, and also the baggage door, but also some of the service doors are provided with a door warning system if they're open, namely the AC ground power door, the oxygen refill door, the refuel access door, the external DC power door, and the water fill access door, and the toilet service compartment door switch. They all have an indication system which from their re respective switches feed their information to something called the DCUs. Now we haven't talked about this yet, we're going to talk about it when we do ATA31, but DCU is a data concentrator unit and it gathers data from all the various airplane systems and then processes it through the avionics system to generate a message. Now in this case, the message that we get that gets generated for these doors is a white status message that says external door open. The other doors are, that are monitored are the passenger door and the baggage door. Now these, if they are open, it's more serious, so you get a higher level of um, indication. So for the passenger door, obviously that's the most serious. Um, so you get a red warning message with that. And the baggage door, uh, an amber caution message. Also for the passenger door, the door has to be closed, locked, and the handle has to be um, uh, completely stowed. And so you also get some caution sub messages. So passenger door latch, passenger door outer handle and passenger door stow uh, uh, caution messages. But if the passenger door is completely unlocked, then you get the red warning message. So let's look at more detail of the passenger door monitoring. 
because we've got a number of uh, switches here that are monitored. Um, so you see from the schematics and power supplies for the indication and monitoring system. So from the, uh, it's using multiple power supplies, 28 volt DC essential bus, 28 volt DC from the battery bus, and another one from the essential bus for the door warning uh, indication system. The top uh, power supply, the uh, essential one, is the, for the door control system to close the electrical motor to close the door. Um, on the passenger door itself, which is represented by that dotted line, so anything inside the dotted line is physically on the actual door, you'll see four proc switches plus a, a micro switch. We'll come back to the micro switch in a minute. But there are four proc switches on the actual physical door and two proc switches on the door frame. So altogether, six proximity switches are monitoring the status of that, ma of that pa main passenger door. It's making sure all the latches are closed, it's making sure the handle's in the right position, etc, uh, etc. Et now there is another switch, which is a micro switch rather than a proc switch. Um, so there's, there's actually all together on the actual physical door, five switches all together, four proc switches plus a micro switch. The micro switch has got nothing to do with the indication system. It's linked into the PETA heating system. And we'll talk about that when we do ice and rain protection. Um, but for the indication system, in, altogether there are six proc switches, four on the door, two on the door frame. In addition, on the picture you can see the baggage door. Now there are two proc switches on the baggage door, just two, um, monitoring the, um, the switches in the chute bolts, making sure they're closed. Um, so all of the information, the, all the proc switches, feed, as you can see from the picture, into the DCUs. And there are, there are two, possibly three DCUs, depending on the mod state. Um, to, for the, and the DCUs are then process those uh, switch statuses and then generate the appropriate messages. So this is just a summary of all the messages associated with the doors. So the first uh, most important one, the red warning message, passenger door, and that will come with an associated voice message as well uh, that uh, starts shouting at you. It just says door. Um, that means the main entrance door is unlocked, i.e. any two of the four latches are unlocked or the inner handle is not stowed. All the rest are either caution or status messages. So um, if a single latch is not in the right position or if the passenger outer handle is not in the right position or if the door is in the closed position um, and the, only the inner handle is not stowed properly after a five second delay, you'll get a passenger, uh, you'll get the appropriate caution message. Um, the baggage door caution message, that means um, the, door, the door latches for the baggage door are not uh, in a safe position. The advisory message door closed, um, that's only shown on the ground, and that tell, shows you that all the latches are locked and the inner and outer handles are stowed. And that will stay in view until the takeoff config OK advisory message is uh, displayed, i.e. we begin to take off and then it's cleared away. The status message, external door open, that means one of those service doors are open. So the AC ground power door, the A oxygen door, the refueling door, the external DC power door, the toilet service door, or the water fill door, or the after equipment bay door are unopened. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 unlocked. So let's take a look at the windscreen and side screens constructions. So first of all, taking the main screens, that's the two sort of very front screens. What we have is a three-ply system. We've got an outer ply, which is a thin glass ply with a heater element on the inner face of it. Then there's a PVB interlayer. Then we have two acrylic plies each with a PVB layer in between. For the side screens, just two layers, um, both of which are acrylic with a PVB interlayer. And then there's a, inner, a heating element on the inner face of the outer ply.
The cabin windows then are made up of a panel assembly, which is comprised of two two plies really with a, an air gap in, in the middle. On, on the inner panel there's a, a vent hole and that's retained in position on the skin with a whole bunch of um, fasteners um, and you've got a gasket, the actual panel assembly, another gasket and then on the inside a retainer ring. Okay, so that's it for the structures. It's just a bit of a summary, so you do need to make sure you read through the um, course notes that you've been sent. Pay, pay a particular attention as well to what we've covered in this uh, video here, but um, in addition to that, you need to just uh, refresh yourselves on the aircraft um, zonings, the fuselage zonings, and also the key station points, the station references, so where the tip of the nose is, which is station 144 and uh, so on and so 